Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ramp Studio Comics. Welcome back. So here's the next stage on the Venom piece, uh, the digital painting side. So I asked you guys what you'd like to see and uh, more people wanted to see digital painting on this particular piece, uh, which I was actually pretty happy with that because I was kind of leaning towards that myself. And um, it, I think it came out pretty decent. It was definitely fun to do. I always uh, enjoy doing this character. Um, there's a lot of freedom in, in designing or painting a character uh, like Venom because there's so many different style renditions and really there's that freedom in almost any character really but uh, something lends to that with this particular character because he's just so wild and crazy so you can definitely do what you want. Um, so what you see me doing here is laying in the large bulk of color. Uh, find find it a lot easier to paint this way because uh, say for instance you paint the mouth all red like that then you can lock transparency and just paint in the confinements of that area. And I talk about that a lot on the channel here. Uh, another thing that I started to do was after I got a certain amount of color in, I merged things together and then separated uh, certain aspects of them. Like I separated the tongue, I separated each hand so that I was able to stage that as well. I almost chopped his head right off because that would have made it easier to paint the shoulders. So the beauty of that is that it allows you to lock transparency of that particular layer. You can paint behind the other things and get your edge work looking better. Uh, it also lends itself to kind of giving you this 3D perception on your work, which is always important. Um, and then I painted the background as a separate layer. You'll see that here in a bit. And uh, so, yeah, so there's lots of ways to clean up your edges by doing that. And the other thing that I find myself doing more and more is actually adding layers over top in uh in for highlights and shadows so essentially like when i want to highlight certain areas of the artwork i'll set that to like add or color dodge uh, the layer blending mode and then if i want to shade certain areas i'll set it to like multiply or overlay and i feel like that's a really great way to to shade and to highlight your work because it provides a little bit of a, a nicer effect than just using dark to light all the time of uh, particular colors and doing the color selections and you're using that floating layer, so you got some more erase and blending options there. Uh, so yeah, so you know, try all these things out, see what works for you. But I've been finding that to be a little bit more helpful for um, you know my character creation and, and painting and stuff like that. So yeah, so uh, so yeah, so really enjoying this. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this particular type of series. Um, I'm always trying to come up with new ideas and be inventive with the channel here and see what you guys like and you know, what we can do to progress it. So let me know if this was fun. So we're basically, um, you know, what it made me think of was, uh, I used to read these books when I was a kid called Choose Your Own Fate. And so I thought about that in regards to the art, you know, I was like, hey, ask more questions and let people kind of really dictate what they'd like to see and how they'd like to see it. So that's why I asked, you know, digital painting or comic style. And, you know, obviously there's so many other variations that we can incorporate that. But, uh, but I just thought it would be a nice interactive way for people to contribute to, you know, what they'd like to see here. So, you know, let me know if you like that and other ideas you got. I'm always listening, um, always trying to make this a better experience for everybody. So, yeah, so here I'm adding in some of those highlights I was talking about set to a color dodge, or I think I used actually the add blending mode. And I did probably 60 to 70 percent of this painting with just a soft brush. Uh, I bounce back and forth from that to the uh, the round paintbrush that's in this program, and I use a little bit of the stippling uh, brushes that, that comes with it. And I still have yet to make any brushes for this program. I've modified quite a few of them, but I'll be making some pretty soon. I just uh, just really trying to get an overall feel for the program itself. And like I said, although I feel like I was able to get pretty far with this. I still felt the need to bring it into uh, Photoshop and do a little bit of that added uh, effects that I do, which I call post processing. But just some, you know, some blending, some dodge and burn effects, uh, control of saturation, just some of the things that I feel like this software app, I should say, doesn't entirely have. But for the most part, um, I think it'll do it'll do majority of what those other programs will do. And you just have to get creative with your, your workflow, your process, and, and really think about workarounds. Um, I think it's highly doable because I've seen some amazing work 
come off this uh, this device from other artists. So, um, and I'm I'm pretty happy thus far what I've been able to you know get to with this. But uh, I know I still got a long ways to go to get to the level that I'd like to be at with it. So here I start adding in kind of the the wet you know grimy look to the mouth and stuff and trying to really beef up the highlights there as well. So this is uh, pretty much wrapping it up. So I appreciate you guys watching. Let me know what you think about this series and what you'd like to see in the future. And remember, you can follow me on Gumroad and support my work on Patreon so I can keep bringing you new content each week. And as always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.